Pointy tears stole one day India, England, Australia What a player What a player What a player Welcome back everybody to yet another episode of What a Player Concussion Sub-Series The ICC Men's T20 World Cup 2021 is almost almost upon us with the groups for the super 12 stage reveal let's take a closer look at how do the groups stack up and what are the associate nations up to who made it to the super 12 who will have opportunity to make it to the super 12 etc 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 and we will get to know everything we have three experts akash sanjay and vishak with us to dissect and look at how the groups are stacked up. Are we excited about the 2020 World Cup? Is it happening in Oman and UAE this year? I don't care where it's happening. It's been five and a half years. Five and a half years, any tournament, we've not had such a big gap. Olympics, World Cup, you name it, pandemic or no pandemic. So, I'm really excited. Okay. And Vishak and Akash particularly excited because RCB will start the second campaign of a shot at IPL for 10th time before they're going to World Cup. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, IPL resumes. You have an opportunity to win the IPL. Virat Kohli, for that matter, has got a great opportunity to come back from UAE with two trophies. So, let's hope that happens. And Sanjay had predicted three trophies of Virat Kohli. One he did not get. Let's hope that he gets the other two at least. Lots to smile for and lots to be happy about. Look, as you guys can see, viewers, more cricket makes us more happy. So, that's what this game is all about. So, let's have a look about how the Round 1 and Super 12s are stacked up. Definitely. Round 1 is all about the qualifiers. The, in the Super 12, it's like the top 8 ranked teams. As, as in when the schedule was announced. Those are the teams who have gained automatic qualification to the Super 12. Then there were 8 teams. Uh, who have to fight fight it out to gain into the so, like gain four spots into the Super 12. So I'm pretty surprised. Like uh, previous champions, Sri Lanka are in, into it. They they won the tournament in 2014. It's a sad state of affairs that they are, they have to play the qualifiers again. I'm surprised that uh, Afghanistan has pipped Bangladesh and Sri Lanka into the, uh, the Super 12. It shows like Afghanistan has been doing pretty well in the T20 circuit. At least they have beaten some strong sides. And they have been performing well. So, good luck to them. Like, uh, And going into the round when it's all about the qualifiers, the Group A consists of Sri Lanka, Ireland, Netherlands and Namibia. And Group B is Bangladesh, Scotland, Papua New Guinea and Oman. So, it will be a great opportunity for Oman considering this uh, tournament is playing in Oman and they will be the home side. So, it will be interesting to see if they can make it to the Super 12. Four spots, Akash and Sanjay to go to Super 12. Who are the four teams you are picking up? And Vishak, thanks for taking us through round one. So, for me, I think Bangladesh is a certainty. They will definitely uh, go through. Sri Lanka, I am not too sure. <laughs> Looking at the current form which they are going, uh, Big call. like the, how they are playing, I am really not sure. I mean, because they have good, decent teams in that group. You've got Netherlands, you've got Ireland who play decently well as well. So, it will be a tough one. Uh, considering these are alien conditions for Sri Lanka as well. But uh, frankly speaking, Sri Lanka should go through. But don't be surprised if Ireland and Netherlands beat them as well. Uh, the fourth spot for me, I think definitely should be Scotland. Scotland or, or Papua New Guinea. I think Papua New Guinea have got good players in there. So they might make a surprise entry. Yeah, I think Sri Lanka and Ireland on Group A and Bangladesh and Scotland are almost certainly, I think, they will be the teams to go through. I cannot see Sri Lanka and Bangladesh not making out of these groups. Uh, and it may actually work in their favour if they haven't had too much cricket. Uh, it could go one way or the other for teams who are playing this initial phases to qualify to the Super 12s. They could get you know reasonable experience, get their combinations right and then be geared up for the um, you know, the, the big Super 12s, uh, there's an outside chance that all Asian teams may end up in Group 2. Like Bangladesh, Sri Lanka, everyone, you know, can end up in in, uh, in that Group 2 along with India and Pakistan. So, lots to look ahead for. Uh, the biggest surprise for me and disappointment is Zimbabwe not even being in this uh, scheme of things of 18, of 16 teams. They are the only test side who not made it uh, or do not have a chance to 
make it to the big round. So quite disappointing for for for, for all, uh, all the cricket fans of Zimbabwe. What would be super cool is if Oman does some magic and gets to Super 12. It'll be good for crowds. It'll be good for the tournament, and and yeah, it'll be good to see a new team coming in. But uh, time will tell. Switching to Super 12, the big names, Group One and Group Two. Ajay P K, who is our CEO, calls Group One as Group of Death. Is is that fair to say? Group One is indeed, I think, a Group of Death because if you look at all four of them, they're serious contenders. Uh, England, Australia, South Africa, and West Indies. We've seen what West Indies can do in the previous two series against Australia and uh, South Africa. England at home are performing brilliantly. Uh, Australia themselves are a team to reckon, and uh, South Africa. Please don't you know, just rule them out because of a couple of bad series. You know you have the Quinton de Kock and Kagi Zorabadas to take them through. So that actually is a very tough one. And if you have somebody like a Bangladesh enter that particular uh, group, it will make it even more tougher. Considering that you might have spinning conditions in your way, so it's going to be a tough group. I think. See, everyone knows this is not football where groups are picked up from from a hat, lucky draw. Everyone knows that they wanted India, Pakistan in the same group because that is the biggest eye-catching game we will have before the knockouts. And if you're India, Pakistan do not play each other, that ICC tournament is uh, is not really a, a tournament in itself because. We rarely play Pakistan, so I'm not surprised India and Pakistan in the same group. I wouldn't necessarily call any of these groups as easy because Afghanistan have earned their place. New Zealand are very strong. In fact, they've beaten India more than India have beaten them. So uh, I think it's it's fair. But yeah, looking at the history of the tournament and just how the players from each each uh, group play in international leagues, you would see in Group One more teams. More players from these teams play in the international league compared to, say, the group two. Great. I feel uh, Bangladesh will make it to the group two because I feel they would be the winners. If you see that the winner of group B goes into the group two, so I comfortably see Bangladesh winning that. So I think uh, that group also becomes tough in that case with Afghanistan and Bangladesh in the same uh, group. Uh, they would be the dark horses. And they can it, this being the T20 World T20 game. Any team can beat any side on their day. So, like we cannot call any group as group of death according to me. It's just the team which plays better on the day would win. Okay, my wild card is Afghanistan. Hopefully, they get to the knockout stages, which is at least till semi-finals, if not finals. If they win the tournament, you never know. But I'll be the happiest. But they are the wild cards for me. That's what mm-hmm. Suman's goal prediction is. He he did that in uh, one of the episodes we had with Ronak Kapoor from Crick Info. Uh, Ronak did tell him that uh, I wouldn't go as wild as that, <laughs> but uh, who knows? You know, they may spring a surprise. Remember that only two teams are going to make it through to the knockout stages, which is straight away going to be semi-finals and then the final. So four teams are going to lose out. Uh, so there will be a lot of competition. Each team will play five games. Have to win at least three or more, so uh, it'll be very interesting. I think there will be one more person apart from Suman who is going to be happy, and that will be Rashid Khan if Afghanistan wins. It seems that he's going to wait to get married until they win a World Cup. So, if this is the tournament they're going to win, you might see Rashid Khan, you know, get the wedding bells as well going on. So, lots to look forward for in the next three four months of cricket. Uh, clear your calendars, plan your vacations, plan your leaves. If you're lucky enough. Go to Middle East to watch the games. I will try hard to see how much it will work out for me to see at least a couple of games. But uh, hopefully, you found this useful. We are going to bring a lot more content to all of you guys, not just World Cup cricket, but Vishak and Akash bring us the daily fantasy tips of every single game, whether it is men's, women's, Ireland, Pakistan women, England women, West Indies women. Doesn't matter. We have all the content for you. Just visit our channel and click on that subscribe button. Uh, Vishak, Akash, and Sanjay, thanks for your inputs as usual. Really appreciate it. Until next time, and a new episode and a new topic. Take care of yourselves, and see you later. Thanks, everyone. Stay safe, guys.